Now again, when it comes to the deed, the different types of deed, uh, you have a bargain and sale deed, you have a quit claim deed. Uh, whenever you see anything in the question relating to uh, which is the deed that clears clouds, anything referring to clouds, you want to put quit claim deed, number two, quit claim deed. But for the most part, we're also going to be looking at general warranty deed. A general warranty deed uh, makes sure that the property is free and clear and that this property is free of all encumbrances. So it's called a general warranty deed. <clears throat> and there's two parts to the deed. The first part here is called the premise and it's the part where the grantor and the grantee's names are going to go and it's also the date part of the, where the date is also going to be written. Okay, so it's called the premise. This first part of the deed is called the premise. The second part of the deed is called the habendum clause, the habendum clause. And in the habendum clause, it has the clause that says that the owner is the owner of the property and has all the legal right to sell that property. So this is called the premise, the first part. The second part is called the habendum clause. Okay, so the premise has the name of the grantor and the grantee. And the habendum clause has also what's called the season clause that says that the owner is the, the, uh, the homeowner has a right of the property, is the owner of the property, and has all the right to sell that property. It's called the habendum clause. Okay, the contracts also have what's called consideration. Consideration. So when we're doing a contract, we're going to look at consideration. Again, consideration is money or anything that can be measured in money. So valuable consideration is money, okay? Or if the person has a Picasso, okay? Or he, have, he has a collection of, of Mercedes Benz that he wants to uh, trade in and exchange uh, for my million dollar house, then that's called valuable consideration, okay? Number two, we have also what's called good consideration, okay? Good consideration. And good consideration is love and affection. So if I leave my house uh, to my children, I'm leaving it for good consideration. I'm leaving it for love and affection. Obviously, if I'm not charging anything, I'm not going to charge them, then I'm doing it for good consideration, love and affection. Okay. But for the most part, the contracts we're going to be looking at are going to be with valuable consideration. Valuable consideration. Okay. So again, uh, here we have a contract. <clears throat> okay. The general warranty deed. And again, we have the name of the grantor, the grantor, the seller, grantee, the buyer. And it says that the grantor for and in consideration, uh, 400, let's say in this example, $400,000 and other valuable consideration hereby acknowledges, uh, hereby grants, bargains, sales, aliens. All these words means that they're going to transfer and conveys this property situated in Dade County in the state of Florida. Okay, and here in this spot right here, we put the legal description of the property. Okay, so we got the legal description. So remember, don't forget that this part here is called the premise, the premise. And the second part is called the habendum, what's called to have and to hold, to have and to hold. Okay, so together with all the tenements, hereditaments, and appurtenances belonging to or appertaining, to have and to hold the same in fee simple forever. Okay, we already looked at fee simple. So when you have all the bundle of rights, you have it fee simple forever. Okay, so this seller is basically saying, that he's going to turn over the property and it says that the grantor hereby covenants with the grantee that the grantor is lawfully seized of set land in fee simple. Okay, so it's saying that he's the owner of the property and that he has all the right legal rights to sell that property. Uh, don't forget that for this deed to be valid, it has to be signed by the grantor and two witnesses. Okay, so for this deed to be valid, it's got to be signed by the grantor and also two witnesses. To be valid okay and it's also going to have consideration too so valuable consideration okay so for the deed to be valid it's got to be signed by a grantor and two witnesses and number two also it's got to be uh, the uh, offered and accepted voluntarily okay so it has to be offered and accepted voluntarily Again, what this is saying, that the property is free and clear with the general warranty deed, that there's no encumbrance, that the property, property is unencumbered, and that there's no liens on the property. <clears throat> okay, so again, when we talk about the deed, okay, remember the Spanish word we learned for it is called escritura, escritura. Okay, and this document, the deed, is the instrument of conveyance. The parties, again, of the deed is the grantor, the seller who gives 
title and the grantee who receives title from the seller. Okay, what is title? Again, the bundle of rights, right of disposition, use, possession, and exclusion. All right, so we've taken a look at a lot of terminology right here. So again, the idea is to become very familiar with the terminology because the more you know, it's going to help you out in understanding the questions and also the contracts you're going to be looking at. Okay, condition of title, number one, when we have chain of title, all the people that had the property, uh, it's called a chain, okay? Uh, the title search, the property could be 200 years old, but we're going to do a title search during the last 30 years. And number three, we're going to get an abstract of title uh, to see what that condition of that title is. And the lawyers are going to give an opinion of title, okay? So you can contract a lawyer to give you an opinion of title to read these documents and to determine if the title is marketable. <clears throat> but again, uh, lawyers don't give guarantees uh, if the title is marketable or not, and that's why we have title insurance to protect the owner and also the lender. Okay, so again, we already looked at that title insurance. We have the owners for the purchase price, which is not transferable, and we have the lender's title insurance, which is for the loan amount and is transferable. And again, we want to protect against things like forgery or things that could put a cloud or or uh, not have a marketable uh, title to the property. Okay, the deeds also, the properties can have certain restrictions. You can have a deed restriction, you can have private restrictions. And in this particular case, the private restrictions on the property uh, could be a deed restriction. Or number two, it could be a restrictive covenant. So a restrictive covenant, for example, is where, um, in a number two we're looking at, where you live in a subdivision and all the houses in the subdivision are white and you paint yours red. Well, obviously, if you paint yours red, it's going to diminish the value of the other properties in the neighborhood. So that's why they put restrictive covenants so that you don't make any changes and so that everything maintains uh, conformity and uniformity in that subdivision. It's called restrictive covenants. Okay, and then you can have liens, again, private restrictions or easements. Again, these are all types of restrictions on the property. So these are private uh, restrictions. Uh, the government restrictions, Number one, you have police power that comes from zoning. And you also have number two, eminent domain. And number three, property taxation. Now with zoning, it's the, the maximum power that uh, the, uh, the police uh, or the zoning has to maintain a control of your property. So let's say, for instance, uh, there was a hurricane that came by and damaged your property. And obviously, it, that property is no longer... Uh, livable. Nobody can occupy that op property. Well, zoning is going to go in there and condemn that property. And you're not going to get remunerated for it. You're not going to get compensated for it. And again, you can't do anything with that property until zoning gives you that permission that you can go back in. Now, number two, eminent domain, what's called condemnation by eminent domain, is whereby the government takes a private property for public use. But through the process of condemnation, they have to pay you what the government feels your property is worth. So that's called condemnation by eminent domain or eminent domain. And property taxation, again, if you don't pay the taxes, the government is going to come in and take your property. Okay, so these are different types of government restrictions. So we've taken a look at the private restrictions and these are some of the government restrictions. Encroachment and easement. Okay, and encroachment number one is where somebody maybe put uh, their property, part of their property within your boundary lines. So let's say, for instance, somebody uh, built a fence uh, on top of your property, within your property. That's called an encroachment, an encroachment. So it's the use of the property without the owner's permission. Whereas an easement is the use of the property with the owner's permission. So let's say, for instance, um, you have this lot of land and in that lot, your house is in that lot of land. Well, the owner of that lot of land has to give you permission so you can get in to your property. So that's called an easement. Also, when the electric company installs the poles that's going to give you the power and electricity to your home, that's also called an easement. Okay. So again, the way to uh, determine if there's an encroachment or easement on your property is through a survey.